Yep, that's that's going to be how it is. T side for Astralis moving into this face off. And slowly but surely, they'll gain some mid control here. Heroic with a 2 3 setup. Three players on B, two on A. And they're just playing reactively here. They're just not taking any risks. Kadian up there with the Julies. Is he going to make a good argument here for the Julies? He's doing some damage so far, and he's just delaying this position. Oh, he's going in for the finishing blow, but Zipex will deny him the damage. Surely he's been done at this point. There's some side control for Astralis, though. Very key frag for Zipex, a difficult one. He knew that push was coming of the Julies when he starts to get low with the bullets. And he was a bomb carrier as well. Bomb not planted just yet, however. Still a man advantage for Heroic, and that smoke will soon be dissipating. Tess on the way, playing off the distraction from his teammates, but he won't even be able to find any kills there. You can see the whooping shush and refresh with the late frags for Heroic as they take the pistol. So far, so good as far as Heroic are concerned. For me, they're a heavy favorite on Ancient specifically in a best of one versus Astralis. I think generally speaking, they'll be a favorite in this match. Shout out to Bubski as well. I feel like he should be at the major. I think it's um, sad that he isn't back yeah. on the bench once again, but uh, hopefully he can find a new perma home. Oh, man. Some of the matchups here for the teams that are going to be facing elimination is, is going to be nuts. I might go back to that point in a moment. We do have the eco here, and it looks like it could be quick work for Tessus. Or maybe for Storm coming in on the cat from Dig there. And there we go. It's a fast one. But yeah, it's kind of crazy. Imagine imagine a world where Astralis gets 16 1 again, James. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? I would love it. No, nothing personal, but I just think it's a great just story. I think there's the I think there's 16 0 yesterday, the potential 16 0. Like when I when I saw I think it was 11 0, I thought like, okay, Counter Strike needs this right now. <laughs> this is just a great headline with the with the, a strong storyline. It would be really sick if, if this went all the way. 16-1 is still a good storyline, though, you know? And especially with that picture where Device was walking past in those yeah. uh, questionable NIP jerseys, let's say. A bright, a bright yellow logo on a uh, white background yeah. I don't think is the uh, best design I've seen. Yeah, that's an interesting choice. Go back into that in a moment. We get a fast play coming through onto the ramp position around B here. Storm very close indeed. Trying to shut this one down, and they're still working with this MP9s against the AKs here. Clave has managed to sneak his way to spawn, but he's been caught by a refresh. Easy upgrade to an AK, and Storm is going to get a backstab as well. It's gone from bad to worse on the first buy for Astralis, and again, Heroic, they kept most of their SMGs into this round. Yeah, I think a lot of rounds are going to look like this on uh, Heroic CT side versus Astralis. But again, it's up to Astralis to show something. I just think stylistically and with the experience and strength Heroic have or can have at present because it isn't always there. But I am certainly expectant of it, especially in this matchup. I think that this is very, uh, these are very troubled waters for Astralis. Again, both these teams one for one at present. So once this best of one is over, somebody's going to be knocking on the door of potential elimination. Some jiggling and a smoke grenade. Just to delay things at this choke point, we can see the bomb collected in spawn, but there's 35 seconds on the clock. And Heroic have got some reasonable map control. They've got two players in Donuts towards the A bomb site. So it's a 2v2 on this B bomb site. They've got some sound cues though, which surely encourages a rotation from Shush at the very least. They haven't seen the bomb yet, so Refresh is making sure they're not split. There's Magis to start clearing things up. Dupree coming in from the back again. They haven't seen the bomb just yet. MP9 teasing. And Dupree is left with 12 HP. A bomb plant would be very, very useful indeed. And the rotation won't come in fast enough to stop that. He's got half a chance, only half. And now nothing. Refresh will cut him down. But that late rotation did allow a bomb plant at the very least for Astralis. Yeah, that's certainly going to be helpful. And they're in an interesting spot because they could buy, but they won't have nades, really, that many nades. But they could get a lot of rifles out. So we might see a half buy possibly. And, you know, that. That with the right strategy can be quite dangerous. You get a lot of nades in there. And are they going to go for the four by? It looks like they might. Oh no, is it a half? It will be a half. Okay. Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. You know, they, with the lost bonus, especially if they get a plan down again, we'll have a four by next round. And they could very well win this one. We'll see what Heroic can do. They're a very active side on this defensive part of Ancient. And it's a fast 
fast effort into the B site from Astralis. Yep, this is one way to try and uh, break Heroic, but Storm and Refresh have got some better ideas that are more favorable to their team. The bomb in the middle of the site at the moment. The choke points are smoked off, but it's a three versus five. Glaive's the only man with utility remaining. He'll try to control what he can, try and give them a chance for worst case scenario. If they can plant this bomb, then they can buy in the next run, I do believe. So that's a worst case scenario, but very worst case. And they'll want more than that. All about timings here. Lucky coming in. Oh, the double. No, denied by Shush. And that's so unfortunate. With that pickup, it could have been a you know, 1v2 after plant still. That there could have been an opportunity for Astralis. But unfortunately, they do not pick up the round. However, let's you know remind ourselves it was a half buy for Astralis. They managed to get the plant in. They did some economic damage. And they will have a you know max buy in this next round. So in that sense, you know, it's gone according to plan. Winning the round's always nice, but they've set themselves up regardless. And for Heroic, again, they play very actively on the CT side of Ancient, which is really fun to watch. I think it's, on any map, it's it's a very good approach. It gives you lots of opportunities, lots of ways to get info. Let's see how they handle this one here. They got, oh, they're going for their 4B opening. See this from them quite often. How about that for some map control? Smoked off, choked off our Astralis. Three players in T spawn. And they don't have possession of mid either. The only person really being proactive right now is Magisk, who's also smoked off, but has some possession towards B because he's shushing the cube. And uh, now, how do Astralis play against this position? waiting for these smokes to go by T-Spawn. They have a lot of utility though, Astralis, so they can chill for the time being. They've got a minute 10 on the clock here to work with. So it looks bad at the beginning, but you know, once that's gone, you have to wonder about the heroic utility. They still have some smokes and such, and that could be a timely HE grenade. Doesn't quite hit the connection they were looking for, but it can be a warning sign for Astralis. Yeah, Astralis playing this a little bit like in, oh sorry, uh, Heroic playing this a little bit like Inferno. We'll go into that point in a moment. We'll have 40 seconds left for Astralis. We've got a very passive setup now from Heroic. Magisk has some good info towards the A main position. May realize that the site is not particularly guarded, but there is a lot of players around this mid spot. We've got Refresh in the nest. We've got Shush by Donut. Good trade. Yeah, bomb not spotted. Shush's position becomes more important. We can see Dupree, who has to assume that somebody's likely to be in his cube spot. 18 seconds now. Cadian on the A bomb site with the AWP will also be very crucial. Shush trying to delay as best he can. Cadian focusing on Donut. 10 seconds. He, they can hear him on fire now, but that bomb needs to get planted. That's a oh. great flick from Cadian. Can they cover this bomb plant now? Lucky trying to get it planted with the Deagle. Tessess gets the kill on Dupree, leaving Lucky in a one versus two. Denied. The clean sheet remains for Heroic. <laughs> You thought I'd deagle. Yeah, I did. I did. Right? You as well. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> that was uh, that was crazy. But Hero pick up the round again, and we can take this brief moment just to you know, talk about their approach here. So the four the four players towards the B side is really cool because you get two players kind of guaranteed in catwalk early on. If there's a fast mid approach, obviously those players have the ability to you know keep some tabs on on any mid action. But it just guarantees very forward control at the beginning. So if the other team's not aggressively taking control towards B ramp, you get it every time. So it's kind of reminiscent of you know taking banana control or taking like uh, on Inferno or long control on Dust Two, and it just gives them lots of options. You can see they can play really passive off of it too. It's also similar to Overpass, like an Overpass when you do the T ramp incendiary incendiary as the CTs, you can play forward if you want, but you don't have to. And so it just creates a lot more pressure on the T side to clear to clear positions to use their utility and gives them less uh, maneuverability in the early round. So this is the game that Heroic's playing and it gives them lots of information. And so far they're playing really well off of this style. And the question for me is, what will Astralis be able to do to, do to prevent them from succeeding in the early round? Astralis at maximum loss bonus means that every time they plant a bomb, they'll get 4,200. Which means if they plant the bomb, they can essentially fall by in the next round. At least five AK-47s. Heroic, once again, will play from the back as far as the A bomb side is concerned. But it's not identical from round to round. But as we can see, pushing through the ruins and dig will be important for them. Cadian and Stown now with a focus on the A bomb site. 
We saw Astralis wait out these grenades once again, but once the smoke goes, it could be big problems now. There's a trade which um, Glaive can't answer to just yet. The bomb's been spotted and Molly will go straight in his direction. Force forward now and Cadian gets another one. That leaves Magis and Dupree versus four with no bomb. Yeah, that shows you the desperation there. Glaive feel, feels like he has to try to trade that kill, even though it's obviously, you know, you're walking into an AWP angle. That just shows a level of desperation. But that's the kind of low percentage play you need to take. And now there's really nothing left here for Dupree. One versus four. And we were worried for Astralis against Heroic because we know Heroic's ancient game to be quite solid, especially these CT sides of theirs. And again, we're seeing the benefits of this, this four-man or three-man take towards Catwalk, having the aggressive utility on the doors. Body language, Dan. Body language yeah. is not very good right now. That's not positive at all. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. That looks like a man who's opened 100 boxes and got uh, blue skin every time. Yep. Yeah, it's not, it's not a good look, is it? 6-0, and we're not really... I don't think... We haven't seen a, a round where Astralis on a buy have had any early advantage. It is, again, as I had mentioned, control. They've always control. Heroic's advantage early on. Imagine if they try and take mid. Imagine what happens the next round from <laughs> Heroic. They are all about Ancient. I quite like seeing Heroic on Ancient, and uh, honestly, I just think this is bad territory for Astralis. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that you don't, what you don't want to do if you're Astralis, really, but you, they may have to, is start gambling by just playing really fast, maybe towards A, towards mid, tr try to gamble. And if Heroic are putting four players on B, in the rounds where you gamble the, in, in the, with the fast pace, sometimes you're going to get it right and you're going to win a round off of it. It's just very inconsistent. And that's not the style, really, that Astralis would want to play. They're going for mid control with the pistols, but they have the pistols and the smoke is going to shut them off. Yeah, I, 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 I felt a fast mid play coming. I just feel like, okay, what, what about this? It's, it's one of those times where the what about this comes through. And of course, it is going to be the, the eco round where they go for that fast mid play, but it might be a test for a full buy round. So I do wonder if we will have a read similar to that from Heroic, where they have an aggressive play towards mid like they did versus Entropic when we previously saw them on Ancient. So that's something I'm going to be looking for in the next round, see if Heroic have a three man surge in mid just in case Astralis are testing the waters in this eco round. Yeah, it's, that's a really good point because it would be quite logical at this point for Astralis to change their approach. And given how strong Heroic have been around front B, you, you actually, I think, as you say, you are going to go fast towards A or mid. And so Cadian, you know, would, call, would likely be calling to his troops a setup that would respect that fact and try to get ahead of Astralis' adjustment. So we'll see. We're going to find out right now. Is, how does the setup look for Heroic? Is it exactly the same? No. Oh, you're totally right. They're going I'm heavy. I'm a genius, Dan. They're going heavy into mid. They're expecting a difference from Astralis, but Astralis are playing into B as well. Yeah, and there will be that presence. So that's going to entertain. There are. That's going to entertain um, Heroic in the mid position, and it's not really going to work out as they were planning. They still have Shush and Storm in position as well. Tetris trying to find their headshot on the B bomb site, unable to do so. And it looks likely that we might see our first round for Astralis. We did start to wonder, especially with yesterday's performance. But they are in good stead now. They'll find an open A bomb site and open B bomb site also. And we'll see what Heroic choose to do. They have money in the bank. And on the CT side, that can quickly disappear. So I feel like if you're on a T side, then you've got more scope for hunting. But when it's the reverse, again, those full buys are more expensive for Heroic. So we'll see if they hold on to this AWP. But Stan may have lost his angle to the player to his left. Indeed nice. he has. Yeah, I think this is this was a great... I actually love how both teams played it. I love the decision from Heroic to go mids, like you said, to try to get ahead of what Astralis are doing. There's, there's different schools of thought because, you know, you get into these points be, you know, where Counter-Strike tax shooters are about conditioning your opponent. And when you condition your opponent, what happens is you then narrow the amount of decisions that can be made by your opponent because they are expecting certain things. So then you play within the scope of what is possible on the decision making based on the conditioning. So that is why we see the mid surge. And for Astralis, it's either that they change something or they keep going towards B. They can't know if, if their opponent will change something or not. So they're kind of aware of that fact that maybe they, maybe they're feeling that Heroic were going to change something that round. And that is what happened. 
more traditional spread from Heroic. Have a look at the red on the radar. We oh have six incendiaries down at the same time. <laughs> it's a lot of crimson. We know that Heroic have been very keen on pushing through ruins and dig, but they have to change up their play. Otherwise, it becomes telegraphed and more punishable. Yeah, lots of utility dump for sure. There's not that much for Heroic. And yeah, double AWP, Lucky and Glaive. Very interesting. Double AWP yes. T side, very Brazilian. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Storm finds an opening there towards Cat. And Storm's still sticking around and digging. Magus doesn't have health, and he's alone. So awkward for Astralis on a T side. So awkward indeed. Oh, two orbs are left. I know. Two orbs. Double orbs on a T side. So, so hard to be effective. It's Dane time. Change. And Heroic, like in these situations, we saw uh, there was a two man set up late on in the forward position on the B bomb site from Heroic, where they were playing an off angle with an instant trade fragger. They're not going to give you the angles to, to get these kills with the AWP. They don't need to. They have 500 HP. There's no need for them to peak. They're five versus two. They're chilling. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Well, another thing, thing that's interesting too is that, you know, Heroic and going really heavy towards B in so many rounds, taking forward control, throwing all their util. It, you're also, if you're Astralis, you would want to be waiting a lot of the time, you know, you'd you, because you can't win that battle, because the timings are just better for the CTs, you would want to hold on to your util. So you have a util advantage going into the mid round. And then you can retake some of those positions that you lose. Which is why I like in this round, where Heroic played it a little bit slower. They didn't go super hardcore into that the, B, uh, the ramp position on B. They took it a little bit easier. And they can do that because of the condition that they put on their opponents with all those heavy B takes. It's like forward catwalk takes and ramp takes from before. You can see Storm having a great time. Can't believe they're playing on Ancient right now. Some of the iciest blue eyes in the game. It's crazy how young Kadeen is, considering how <laughs> yeah. how long he's been around for. It is crazy. Yeah. Because at the beginning of like my CS casting career, I suppose, I remember Kady like being in London with Kadeen because he came down to the studio and stuff like that in like yeah. one of the original like the first seasons to observe. Not even to right. cast. Observing. He's, observing. He, he's been talent, he's been doing everything. Yeah. Yeah. He Brilliant. Was <laughs> been on the longest the longest grind of uh, crazy. of pretty much any top tier pro from you know the way his career his career has gone yeah definitely yeah. been the uh, the long game for sure a long time coming eight to one heroic dominating Astralis. Ha they've got a foot on the face at present but finally they they get an early pick now glaive taking sound out that aggression through dig has finally been punished we can see that Astralis are reacting by rotating back towards B for a take towards B ramp and catwalk and so on in the advent of the pick onto Storm, knowing that Storm is usually anchoring around the dig area. So Astralis can just sort of walk in contact into the B site here. And we've got a passive play. It's an A stack, a retake on B, expecting Kadian to like to that, get that one kill, and they set up the retake. Great flashes though. That will deny Kadian. He's got to survive. Oh, they're very fast approaching his side. He's, it's, oh my god, he's got he's been saved by a teammate flashing. He may have a chance now. He's ahead of this Molotov as well. If he can focus, but he chooses to fall back. They're gonna play it safe now. He'll be deleted regardless. Three versus five. Maybe it's time to try and hold on to what you have. There's a lot of uh, CS to play in this half. And they don't want to be on eco just yet, so they will be falling back as Astralis double their score to two. Yeah, it, it's so important. Like the back sight control is so important. When the T's have that smoked off and they're able to kind of push it, you're locked out totally as a CTs. So Cadian's position there to try to stay alive but not concede the position and fall behind the smoke is pretty key. But of course, he was unable to do that because of the approach from Astralis. So knowing their stuff, and they're not out of this one just yet. The second round collected. And I wonder if we'll see Heroic going back to some of the similar plays from before, where they're heavy on the B control then fall off. Because they have actually been getting caught by Astralis on the mid push. That angle from mid to cat. 
So we could get a different approach entirely from Heroic. It's it's uh they haven't had to show too much just yet. Fast smoke into mid. That's a lovely flip knife, Mr. Cadian. Just need a one AWP now, which I think will be a relief for Astralis. Six round lead at present. Some flashes for yet more aggression. Again, they've smoked off the choke point early. Oh, this HE grenade! I like the angle. Yeah. And so we do get that, that you know, similar <gasps> familiar opening. Ooh. That is a gap, Dan. The slightest gap. But a gap that shows plenty of promise for the future. Yeah. And Charles have their mid control now, but they're trying to convert into a B split. They've got the bomb around the B side of spawn. And Heroic are, you know, sensing the mid presence. They're having to, you know, we see that Storm and Tessus are looking after that mid nest position. They they know that this is compromised. This is a huge moment here for Dupree for Astralis. This be a big win. Oh, Tessus has absolutely owned it. And Shush is holding down his position as well, falling back into the donut to safety. Glaive trying to chase, trying to trade, being denied. They are getting domed by these silenced M4s. AK advantage not make, making a play in this round as they find themselves in a two versus five. Stown now showing his strength as they put their foot back on the throat of Astralis in round 11. They win every single duel. No response from Astralis whatsoever. Lucky with the AWP. I think he pressed Q before he pressed mouse one. Still gets a kill though. Hate to see it. Yeah. It was a great call from Heroic to, to understand what was happening. Because Astralis was setting up the B play and the B split and they had Dupree in that really deep position. And the worst case scenario is then if if the push comes on to B and Dupree's killing rotations, right? If he stays alive. So Heroic recognize this and they say, okay, well, let's deal with Dupree. Let's at least, at least trade out that position. And Astralis weren't even ready to push into B yet. They lost all those jewels versus Silence M4s and now three AK-47s have been collected by Heroic. So you could say that things are likely to get even worse unless yeah. they can turn things around here. Astralis really struggling on the T side versus the prowess and aggression of Heroic. Now we see a three-man mid take. And again, there are risks to be taken on this um, on this CT side, if you're where you choose to stack your men, rotate. Especially we saw Dupree deep in mid last round, so no avail having lost that duel. But that's such a strong position, and we can see heroic. We've seen Phase abuse that as well. They'll have to do better next time. But for now, action towards Donut. Shush, isolating twice again with that AK. Zipex now oh. tries to hold things down, but it will oh. be utterly denied. Shut down like a computer with the plug pulled out of the back. Oh, what a round from Heroic. I mean, can you ask for, like, just, just in terms of the ego, James, Shush just won three consecutive 1v1s against three Astralis players. That's, that's insane. The skill diff that Shush just put on Astralis is awful if you're Astralis right now. It's just like, I just can't imagine this emotionally how difficult it is. Like from a confidence standpoint, that emotional aspect of the game must be at an all-time low right now because Heroic are looking so, so good in these duels. They're so confident. They're winning every battle. Where's the morale, Dan? We need a pause. We need some team building exercises. We need to like, I don't know, make some kind of Lego bonsai tree together, some kind of team project in a short 30 seconds because this is going terribly for Astralis. Yeah, and you don't have Zonic there able to kind of give his energy. Imagine what it must be like. He can't Zonic. cheer. He can't cheer. He's cheerless. He's, he's in, joyless, Dan. He's, he's joyless. He's he's in a prison right now. He's just in a prison cell. He's, he's you know, I mean, it's he's like in the interrogation chamber where it's like one-way glass. Like, he can see out. But I guess it's a weird interrogation chamber. He can see out, but <laughs> no one can see in, no one can hear him. He's in a know. joyless, a joyless soundproof glass enclosure. Exactly. Yeah, with limited opportunity for communication. Yeah, I think you did a better job there. I kind of messed up my metaphors, but that's fine. But yeah, I mean, the fact that you know you don't have that source of of morale that's coming from from an individual like Sonic is certainly problematic. We know Glaive is a great leader of men. But this is certainly a difficult position for Astralis to be in. It's definitely not over. We can see Glaive looking for some some frags in this round, just you know, to keep things and get something going for the team. Nothing to be done there. The best outcome now is four rounds on the T side for Astralis. They are doing better than they did versus NIP yesterday. That's that's, that's true. 
That is... That's... That's true. Um, either way, and we're not even getting a timeout. We haven't had a timeout from Astralis. Surely you'd want to use some timeouts. I'm telling you, man. Team building exercise. Let's get some nursery rhymes to singing together or something. You know, find some synergy somewhere. No, but on a serious note, I just think, like, you don't want to be playing Heroic on Ancient, man. I, I, I didn't see it. You know, the looking at the historical maps, of course, it doesn't tell the whole story. Astralis with four games on Ancient in the last three months, 50%. But so there's always going to be more than that. You no, know, based on scrims, what you've been preparing. But stylistically, man, you don't want it versus Heroic. Like, again, Entropic, that, that match was fantastic. And they, they are playing very, very well. The level of aggression there and how they adjusted to Heroic on the flight was very engaging to watch. But Astralis are being dominated. They are being starved of oxygen. Refresh is going in. Oh, he's found a pulling a nade out. No, he gets both of them. Oh my god. Can it get any worse? Yes, it can. I, I guess it can. Shush is 12 for one. He's only died one time. That's kind of nuts so far. Oh. Oh, they're getting picked to pieces. I remember a time when the Cadian was trying to get into. Well, I don't know if he was trying to get into, but when he stood in for Astralis once, he seemed like he might be one of the players that could have been a prospect to kind of join that lineup when Astralis was sort of like on the way up and multiple times. And Cadian had to find his own path, James. And look at him now. There is an old African saying that don't play heroic on ancient in a best of one. Right. My mother used to tell me that all the time. It's, uh, it's quite prescient. Well, 12 to 2 is a scoreline, and Astralis are really very much on the struggle bus at the present time. Oh, the angles from Stown. You know, don't want to count Astralis out, of course. You know, it, it is Astralis after all, but it is, of course, looking really bad on pretty much every single count. So we'll see if they can do anything here. Scrape together one last round, perhaps, but the mid control is strong, and it will be a fast A hit coming through from Astralis. And we haven't really seen them run it down on A very often. And they are going to get into the site here. It's going to be a full retake for Heroic. Maybe a chance for a late round from Astralis at the end of this half. Oh, no! Shush! No, you haven't! No, you haven't! Your auto sniper, insult to injury, a complete lack of respect. Refresh of a two man spray down. The auto sniper to get that. Oh, no, I can't. I can't! <laughs> oh, no. 13 to 2 with the final score on the end of the first half. Heroic, absolutely dominating their CT side. We expected them to have a strong CT side. They play this map very well. And there wasn't a response from Astralis. There wasn't good counterplay. And when it come down, to, when it came down to the individual clutch moments, Astralis also couldn't contest. The scoreline, the, the fragging is just, it's a desperate place. Not a single player from Astralis able to kind of stand up and, and take the burden to carry the rest, to invigorate the rest. There wasn't any moment like that in the first half, but it's the second half. Maybe now it can be different as we find Astralis on the CT side. They don't have any room. They don't have any room for mistake. But it's Astralis. It's one of the, gr the greatest cores in all of CSGO history. In the hands of Refresh is the P250 for that extra range, that extra one tap ability. And now, hey, you know, if, if Astralis can survive this pistol, if they can survive this pistol round, because it may be a question of survival at present, then maybe they can mount a strong CT side. Magisk has multiple assailants. He is going to be taken out from three different angles and position is lost on the A bomb side. The bomb not planted just yet, however, and maybe there's a chance. They're keeping the Heroic busy, but as I say that, Heroic get every kill. And there's a the first one from Dupree, and now Dupree is the last one remaining. One versus four. And again, he's being denied. The angles refresh, dancing, just looking for that info. There's a HE coming his way. There he goes. Chance for Dupree now, but a double peek is coming through. And the worst has happened. Heroic, take the pistol. Oh my goodness. 
this is crazy. This is so crazy. The, the thing is, is that the confidence game, you know, they say it's a confidence game, right? You know, I so I had uh, Alicia's sports psychologist on my podcast not too long ago, and I asked him the question, because you know how every, every pro says, Counter-Strike is a confidence game, right? I asked him, I said, what is confidence? Because most people aren't able to really tell you what confidence really means. And we have to listen to the podcast to find out the answer. No, <laughs> just, just kidding. But we'll go to it in a moment though. We'll see if Astralis can, you know, master up a, something here on the CT side. They've had to force buy. They've got to do it. They have no room to lose rounds. Rogue rotating back to B here for the respawn. If there was a slide, let's say the, the slide on overpass, right? If that slide was sandpaper <laughs> and you had to slide down it naked, <laughs> I think that would be a good analogy for Astralis in this game of overpass right now. They're sliding naked down a slide made from sandpaper. There's nothing but pain and lesions coming their way. They need to defend this B bomb site now, and Tessess will be the first to drop Zipex. Denied by the MAC 10 up close. Glaven the smoke now. Surely desperation played through the smoke comes through. He hears the beep beep from the bomb being planted, but he's still standing now, waiting for that smoke to dissipate, hoping that something comes his way. Refresh with the MAC 10. Won't be able to do the job there. So we've got a three versus three, but Stan will start to thin these numbers out, leaving Dupree in a one versus three. And scout in hand, looking to try to see if he can open things up here. Does take down Storm, but he's down to 27 health. There's the backstab from Kadian, 15 to 2. And it's going to be... I mean, we saw Astralis on the receiving end of a 16-1 yesterday. I, I mean, in terms of a turning point for an org, like like Astralis, again, like historically, when did they ever get 16-1'd at a competition like this? When do they ever get 16-2 ever get to a competition like this? What is going through their heads right now? It's probably numb, Dan. It's probably numb. It's, uh, I feel like we should just bear witness in silence. Yeah. The proceedings is. of this round. You, you want it to be a silent... I mean, one player's dead already. Well, we can pretend like we're coaches. They've got a chance, Dan. They actually have a chance. Stan's got four HP, so this may not be over just yet. Thought it was time to pour one out, but we might not be quite there. The Stratus need 13 rounds in a row, but with three rifles up, this could still be over. And Dupree, oh, nice shot from Dupree. Gets another one off of the scout. Storm very weak, and Kaden quickly hightailing it to the B site, which is clear. Storm might find the timing, but lucky with the better. That right eye angle there. Certainly superior. Cadian will now have a plant, a one versus two. Who, I think, you know, even from a storyline perspective, again, who better to just take Astralis out of the game than Cadian in a moment like this? Here comes Lucky, the timing. Oh, he, he, and he hears the second play. He has all the info now where both players are. Cadian resetting the position. Needs to find those 1v1s. There's the first one. And great movement from Dupree, denying it. That's 15 to 3. 3 to 15, I should say. And, man. The silent casting, I was like, are we on strike? Like, <laughs> the pressure to say something when you're on air as a caster is right. like, I'm like, oh. But it's, all, it's, interesting to see, it's interesting to see how quiet the map can be. Yeah. How isolated and alone it can feel when you just cut, when the casters cut noise. You just, you wanted to... <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to convey the feelings of loneliness. The desolate atmosphere. I just wanted that to come through the speakers at home. 
But Astralis are still in this. I think, you know, once once they look likely to, to win the round, you've got to respect that and start chatting again. Yeah. They'll have two AK-47s in their hands. And of course, the margin for error is small. Heroica will be on the eco for this round. And it's quite the eco. All Glocks. And the, and the focus is that they require one round. They don't want to overinvest and leave themselves short in a buy round. And we've seen that from teams before, where it hasn't necessarily made sense. And they've, they just haven't had all that they could have in the buy rounds when they required very few rounds. Yeah. And that's come to bite people in the butt, but that won't be the case for Heroic. All Glocks. I've, I mean, we, we've casted Astralis, you know, so many times over the years, and there's been a lot of looks where you'd see them maybe get like two rounds and a half or something like that, but there was always the confidence that they would be able to do something with it. And you could see that based on how the rounds were going and how the players were in, in the booths and so on. And it's a stark difference this time to those times when in this time we are struggling to see that same energy in the Astralis camp. There's something amiss there right now, but we'll see if they can recover. We've got Heroic looking to burst onto the A site. There's only one player here, James. Magics must be perfect. Isolating the fights with the box. Flashes will allow them to try and make their way forward. Still in a choke point. No, that was a great tap with the last bullet. Eventually, he will be eliminated. But we've got a four versus one now as Cadian with a Glock. <laughs> will try to do what he can. There we go. Fourth round on the board for Astralis. And to just kind of circle back to the confidence thing. Uh, confidence, the way that uh, Allegiant Sports psychologist Jared Tenler described it is, it's an emotion. It is simply the estimation of your abilities, and it can be accurate or inaccurate. And as you're playing through the game, of course, like the estimation of your abilities translates to the kinds of plays you can make and the levels of focus that you can have. So when you overestimate your ability, you may make plays that are bad. Similarly, when you underestimate your ability, because you're getting owned. So that's a very, very quick dive into that topic. I think it's a very interesting one. And we're back into the buying here for both sides. Astralis on the razor's edge, on the knife's edge. Another round where we see six incendiaries deployed at the beginning of the round. So you can see how important the early map control is. The early establishments are, and again, from Her Astralis, we see similar that we saw from Heroic. Holding down this position, it's showing some presence. I think there'll be an exchange of grenades there. Sipex given a second smoke grenade to hold this position, should he choose to do so. One minute on the clock for Heroic, who have a few smokes. They've got three smokes, in fact. So they are very well equipped to execute onto a bomb site and control these choke points, or try to. And Astralis will have to decide if they go ahead of them or not. Glaive deployed. Down goes Zipex as well. 3v3 now. Four, excuse me. Heroic have the man advantage. Refresh moving into a position near that smoke as Heroic focus on this B bomb sign. We've got two Astralis players in CT spawn. They are unsure as to what may be going on here and surely Lucky gets traded. Can his team get here in time? I don't see how he survives this. Instant trade by Heroic. Big problems for Astralis. Very big problems indeed. Dupree walking across. Has a great angle for a double. He's going to spray both down. Make it three for Dupree as Astralis stay in it for now. It's a long, long road. And I don't know if I've seen Dupree look happy ever at this event. Like, he's, I, I don't know, it's just dejection. It just feels like dejection all the time. Well, when you have a history like his, this is very, very substandard. This is far oh, yeah. from ideal. This is, uh, you know, his, his standards for himself. And let's not forget that the, the device and Dupree connection for years was yeah. Absolutely spectacular, but he's got to find something new now with this different roster. Into the A bomb site, Heroic Go. They're going to take map control, and that is significant because they have the numbers, they've got the position to swarm. As Astralis will try to make something happen, Magisk and Dupree take things into their own hands, and that will quickly, very quickly, be a clean wipe on the A bomb site. Exactly the round Astralis need. One round at a time. Don't look at the overall score. Just take it in bite sizes. Well, the great thing there as well is that Heroic, they know that doing economic damage doesn't matter because they only need to win one round. So what they do is they play for their own economy by just guaranteeing a bomb plant. And so by guaranteeing the bomb plant, again, that's just, that is the best possible outcome they could have had there, except winning the round, which obviously is very unlikely. So I love that from them. 
you know, making sure that they have correct goals and objectives going throughout these rounds. And now we're back into the buy. No AWP here in the hands of Heroic. We have the double AWP. Magic Skin Lucky, though, for Astralis. Makes it feel a little bit like Dust 2, in a way. And Lucky playing that sort of retake angle here, trying to hold back sight. And here come the nades. Has plenty of sight, Lucky, to open the kills onto Caden, who tries to make space for his team. So he sacrificed himself, essentially, to take the bomb site. This time, there's more utility for Heroic. Shush may have some sound cues from Lucky touching that, those flames, but needs to be real careful about trying to bait this shot here. We've got a flash on the way, and surely Glaive is going to get a kill. Well, there'll be a trade at the very least. And that's even better from Lucky. Four versus two now. The trades will continue in Astralis' favor. Refresh with a very tight angle now. One versus two, but running out of position. Astralis survive another test. Yeah, it's a close one. Oh, there's a smile. There was a, there was a smirk. There was something. It was a close one. And, you know, th these are the moments too when you remember your achievements. You remember that you've, you've won you know, countless tournaments that you've come back from countless dire situations, which they have, again, as a core, that they have achieved that. So that's the thing is, is that, you know, no matter how bad it looks, it's not over till it's over. And they're on the CT side here. Heroic, you know, going for the half buy, might see something similar to that, that A round, but now on B instead. They know that the AWP is playing this position as well. So if, if it's one whiffed shot by Lucky, that's a huge edge for these pistols. And again, they swarm onto the site. They have some post-plant smokes. They can kill some time here. That is a very important one. Need to avoid some spray, though. Caden on the AWP. This could be the round. Down goes Magisk. That's two in the bag, and it goes even. It gets even more difficult for Astralis. Trying to make a play through the smoke now. Caden finds a third one. Zipex and Dupree remain. Two versus five to stay alive in this 1-1 one -one situation. Now it's down to Zipex, and we've reached the end of the line in 